gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States, and protector of Mexico. Back with you once again for episode number 132 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is September 3rd, 2020. It is our 168th day under COVID-19 restrictions. Beginning with a programming note as we did yesterday, we will not be doing a vlog tomorrow due to some conflicting imperial business that we must attend to. So we will be here on Saturday with our guest superstar, the Countess Lola Montez of Lansfeld. Uh, but no Friday show. We'll be back again then after Saturday on Tuesday. Also, do not forget, Empire Day is approaching. September 17, the date in 1859, when we declared ourselves Emperor of the United States. We would later add the title Protector of Mexico. So we are coming together, as we must do these days, virtually on the Zoom. And it is sponsored by the Emperor Norton Legacy League, so if you go to Emperor Norton Legacy League on the uh, Facebook, then you can sign up for the evening's festivities. 7 p.m., we're encouraging you to make Emperor Norton Sundays. The recipe is on the event. Uh, we'll also have an Ask the Emperor segment, and then we're encouraging our loyal subjects to tell us what we mean to them. So please sign up. And we'll have that Zoom link posted fairly soon. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, please, please, please do that. Let's begin with our national days. It is Skyscraper Day, a day dedicated to those tall glass buildings. Yes, indeed. U.S. Bowling League Day. I don't know if bowling alleys are open at the moment, are they? Well, Nonetheless, it's a good form of exercise, a lot of fun. Uh, of course, if you like the Big Lebowski, that's, uh, and, and Kingpin, don't forget about Kingpin, one of the great bowling movies. So uh, that's that. And Welsh Rarebit Day. That always makes me think of Windsor McKay, the man who drew a little Nemo. Before that, he had a strip called Confessions of a Welsh Rarebit Feed, or a Rarebit Feed, I believe was the actual title. It was always a dream. He loved doing dreams. Check out Windsor McKay, if you never have, a very early animator as well. But uh, today is Welsh Rarebit Day, and then today is Papa was a Rolling Stone Day. Why? Well, it's the 3rd of September, a day I'll always remember. Yes, I will because that was the day that my daddy died. I never got a chance to meet him. Never heard nothing but bad things about him. Mama, I'm depending upon you to tell me the truth. The Temptations. Florida Man. Well, we're gonna do a little something a little different today. Normally we just read the headline, but this one was so weird, we felt we had to read a couple of quotes from it as well. So we're breaking with tradition today. Florida man wants U.S. military to fight Hurricane Dorian with ice. Okay, these are quotes from him. I've seen the video. He's being serious. We have a Navy. Why don't the Navy come and drop ice in the warm water so they can get going as fast as it's going, the Palm Springs, Palm, Palm Bay, pardon me, man said. And then he went on. We have an Air Force. Drive some Air Force planes around to get the winds going the opposite way. The Navy to go in circles to fly it the other way. And that would stop the winds, he figured. Uh, where do you ever get an idea like that? I don't know. I once read somebody thought it was a good idea to drop a nuclear bomb on a hurricane to stop it. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Well, for today's San Francisco portion of our history, we rely, as we so often do, on John Ralston's wonderful book, this date in San Francisco. Because on September 3rd, 1928, the Chronicle publicizes Philo Farnsworth's electronic television. On September 7, 1927, Philo, Phil Farnsworth, a 21-year-old 20 Utah-born, Idaho-raised farm boy who could afford only one year of college, had achieved something the scientific and engineering world thought impossible. 
electronic transmission of visual images. Television was conceived as early as 1884 by the Russian inventor Pavel Nip Nipkov, Nipkow, pardon me, who used a spinning disc to mechanically scan an image into electronic impulses. In the 1920s, several research laboratories and individuals were carrying on Nipkow's work, but Farnsworth, as a teenager, concluded that the spinning disc could never give adequate resolution and had sketched a process for breaking down images electronically, transmitting them like radio waves and reproducing them with a cathode ray tube. A chance encounter in Salt Lake City with two community chest fundraisers with financial contacts in San Francisco led to Farnsworth getting $25,000 from Crocker Bank to rent a laboratory at 202 Green Street, which is still there, and there's a plaque in front commemorating it. Hire staff and design and make equipment. On September 1st, 1928, a few reporters came by the lab while Farnsworth transmitted a movie clip of Mary Pickford and spoke. On Sunday, the second Farnsworth and his wife, brother-in-law Cliff and Cliff's wife Lola, went to a movie, a movie of the Fox Theater. Oh, the beautiful Fox Theater. Driving down Market Street afterwards, Farnsworth stopped, by, stopped to buy Monday's Chronicle. On the first page of the second section, the world's first major article on successful electronic television appeared. Quote, two major advances in television were announced Saturday by a young inventor who has been working quietly away in his laboratory in San Francisco and has evolved a system of television basically different from any system yet placed in operation. Farnsworth's system was far from simple in the extreme, but it is the basis of television which would itself be the basis of computer screens and the internet. Farnsworth and his family read the article at home gleefully, and then Farnsworth was sobered. The article would stimulate competitors. Farnsworth's apprehensions were confirmed after a 1930 visit by Russian-born engineer Vladimir Zorikin, who had come to Green Street ostensibly on a courtesy call, but actually at the behest of Radio Corporation of America President David Sarnoff, for whom Zorikin worked. Other RCA representatives followed a bitter battle over patents would result with Sarnoff and RCA claiming credit for television. No, embedded here in San Francisco on the, in the Green Street Laboratory. We'll have a picture of it up here. Of course, there was a sir, very similar thing going on in the UK as well. So we do have to say that television was co-invented. Electronic television was co-invented here in San Francisco. There you go. So let's move on to our other histories for today. The year 301, San Marino, one of the smallest nations in the world and the world's oldest republic still in existence is founded by St. Marinus. 1838, Frederick Douglass escapes from slavery disguised as a sailor. 1925, the airship USS Shenandoah crashes in a storm near Caldwell, Ohio, killing 14, 29 survive. 1967, the final episode of What's My Line, hosted by John Charles Daly on CBS TV. The program began in 1950. Uh, some of the panelists would include, of course, the regulars like... Uh, uh, Dorothy Kilgallen, uh, Anne Francis, and, uh, oh God, just this, his name just escaped me, the guy from Random House. Well, we'll put it up there. Sorry, I, I suddenly forgot it. Uh, there were all sorts of guest uh, panelists as well. Uh, Groucho Marx, Soupy Sales, Steve Allen. Oh, whenever Groucho was on the show, it was Bedlam. So, uh, Bennett Surf, that was his name, Bennett Surf, indeed. Great show. A lot of the reruns, by the way, are on uh, the YouTube, which is where we are. So uh, check it out. It was a great, great show. Thus, this date in 1971, the Watergate team, the Plumbers, break into Daniel Ellsberg's doctor's office to steal his patient files on Ellsberg. Also in 1971, John Lennon leaves the UK from New York City, never to return permanently. This date in 1978, Pope John Paul I is officially installed as the 263rd Pope. He dies 33 days later. 1995, eBay, which stands for Electronic Bay, is founded by Pierre Omidyar. 
2015, Kentucky's Rowan County clerk, Kim Davis, is jailed for refusing to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. Births today. 1856, Lewis Sullivan, uh, American architect, father of the skyscrapers, why it's skyscraper day. 1875, Ferdinand Porsche, German auto engineer, designed the Volkswagen Beetle, founder of the Porsche Car Company. Wait, I just pronounced the names differently, didn't I? Ferdinand Porsche, or is it Porsche? I've never been able to settle that one. We'll go with both. 1913, actor Alan Ladd. 1914, another actor, but more famous for her game show appearances, Kitty Carlisle Hart. She was uh, the widow of Moss Hart, the famous playwright. 1923, Mort Walker, American cartoonist, Beetle Bailey, High and Lois. Uh, the work is still being carried on by his sons. 1931, actor Mitzi Gaynor, another actor. 1935, Eileen Brennan. 1942, Al Jardine of the Beach Boys, another actor. 1944, Valerie Perrine. And 1965, bad boy actor Charlie Sheen. Moving on to our deaths today, Oliver Cromwell, the Lord Protector of England. Uh, we did not like him very much, but we are the protector of Mexico after all, so we sympathize a little bit with his plight. 1962, poet E.E. E. Cummings. Everything was always lowercase in his uh, poems, I believe. Correct me, Mark, but I know definitely his, uh, his name was always lowercase. 1991, film director Frank Capra, who we had the honor of meeting once. We were at the University of California, Irvine, watching a showing of It's a Wonderful Life. The lights come up, we turn around. Frank Capra's been sitting behind us the whole time. Didn't know. 2005, William, William Rehnquist, Chief Justice of the U.S. Supreme Court. 2007, Steve Fawcett, American Adventurer. First person to fly solo nonstop around the world in a balloon disappears while flying. At the age of 63, he could still be up there for all we know. Maybe. Maybe he's with Judge Crater. 2012, Reverend Sung Myung Moon, a South Korean evangelist. Uh, and this just in this morning, Ian Mitchell, bassist for the Bay City Rollers, passed away today at the age of 62. We're going to have two quotes today because they're both good. Uh, first one being uh, from Groucho Marx, one of our favorites. In fact, I think we'll imitate him here. I find television very educating. Every time somebody turns on the set, I go in the other room and read a book. And the second one is from Dorothy Ga Gambrell, the author of Cat and Girl Volume 1. I think we'll just read this one in Groucho's voice as well. Why not? If television's a babysitter and the internet is a the internet is a drunk librarian who won't shut up. Well, that wraps it up for today's, or rather, that wraps it up for today's edition. Don't forget, if you want to make a one-time donation, we can certainly use the money over here. We've got uh, the link to our Patreon account. If you want them to do a subscription, subscription, or uh, our, our PayPal. Oh yeah, we get our pals are always people who pay us, yes indeed. And I think we'll just drop that for the rest. If you want to get more information about what the Countess and I normally do for our tours, we're hoping to start up real soon, so uh, maybe in the near future uh, we will be out again on the streets. Uh, here's more information about that. Also good historical information on each of the websites that are linked to the SF Time Machine site. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside, and therefore stay healthy. If you do go outside, please wear a mask. It's very important. Don't take unproven cures that might kill you. We want you around to watch our vlog. And most of all, be kind to one another. Until we see you again, a gracious good day.